this week in the grass garden, we're going to look at cultivars in the species Miscanthus sinensis. Miscanthus grasses are native to Asia and they're extensively used in the landscape. There are over 50 cultivars available commercially and some of these have been popular in the garden for over a hundred years. Now in some parts of the United States, Miscanthus can be invasive in natural areas, but this is the wild or species type Miscanthus and it's different from the cultivated varieties that we grow ornamentally. Now with any plant that poses a risk of escaping the garden, there's some good management practices we could follow. One of these is just to monitor the plant closely and monitor the beds around it watching for seedlings. If you do find that that plant produces a lot of seedlings and it seems to be a problem, the, the best thing to do is just remove it from the garden and destroy it and try something different in its place. With the Miscanthus grasses, you want to only purchase named cultivars and never plant the wild or species type. And if you live near a natural area, it might be a good idea to, to select a native plant, a native grass to plant in place of the Miscanthus. Well, the Miscanthus cultivars are widely popular for their very graceful arching uh, leaf blades. There are many different cultivars that range in size, and one of the main differences in these that we're going to look at is the variegation pattern. So let's start with this grass here. This is morning light Miscanthus, and it is a very delicate, graceful plant. It is known for its very fine leaf blades that have white variegation along the leaf margin. And that gives the plant sort of a silvery appearance, especially from a distance. It's a very versatile grass. It works well alone as an accent, but it also looks very nice when it's planted in mass. Now in front of it, we have a smaller Miscanthus, and this is called Gold Bar, and the variegation on this is quite different. It uh, has horizontal bands going across the leaf blade, rather than the vertical variegation. And it gives the plant a very striking appearance. Now, if you read about gold bar in catalogs, it will say that the plant grows four to five feet. And we've grown it for a number of years and have not found it to reach that size. Uh, it could be that it's just much slower growing and we haven't left it in one spot long enough to see how large it'll mature. However, this small compact form makes it really useful in containers and you can imagine combining it with some yellow foliage where it'll have a wonderful appearance. Both of these Miscanthus have a nice upright form that they tend to hold very well. I have another Miscanthus that has that horizontal banding and this is a much older cultivar and it's called Zebrinus and the uh, irregular splotches going across the leaf blade give it its common name which is zebra grass and this is a much larger uh, ze um, miscanthus it'll reach four to five feet in height but again it has a very nice upright form and very striking bold statement in the landscape this miscanthus cultivar has a little bit different appearance this is called rigoletto and it has, again, the, the vertical variegation. It has several stripes of white throughout that dark green color. And it has so much white that from a distance, the white tends to dominate over the green, giving a lighter appearance, um, which makes it very useful as a backdrop. Also, the, the taller size makes it useful as a backdrop as well. It can reach about four to five feet. Uh, but this one has a very bold appearance, can be used again as standalone as an accent but in mass works very well. This cultivar is a little bit different. It's one of the dwarf cultivars and this is called the Daggio and it has a single white stripe down the middle of the green blade and the blades are a bit narrower. Um, our Rigoletto had very wide blades which gave it a bold appearance. This one's a bit finer. Um, and now it's a dwarf but it still gets fairly tall. It reaches two to three feet and it's, because of its small size, it's useful in those smaller areas or smaller gardens. It um, works very well in a mixed bed or border. Now, all of the Miscanthus are very easy to grow, and they tolerate a wide range of soils, including heavy clay soil. They prefer full sun conditions. And in August, September, and October, you'll start to see these 
uh, flower plumes developing. They're just getting started now. And they are gonna be a nice silvery white color and they get rather tall and large. They'll stand up above the foliage and just have a beautiful airy appearance. And it's a really good idea to leave the, the leaf blades and the flowers intact over the winter to provide some visual interest. And also leaving the leaves intact helps protect the crown over the winter so that it more successfully uh, survives to the next year. So we wanna wait and cut these back in the late winter, early spring before the new growth develops. That's all the time we have for this week's episode of Oklahoma Gardening. Be sure to join us again next week when we'll be visiting the Cleveland County Master Gardeners.